Joshua chapter 3. I'm going to read the first four verses. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan. He and all the children of Israel and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host, and they commanded the people, saying, When ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priest and the Levites bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. And there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that ye may know the way by which ye must go. For you have not passed this way here to four. The background setting of this two spies had returned from Jericho, having fallen, having followed Joshua orders to check out the land of the city. You know, in a this is a picture of when we're getting ready to go into our city. That's what we're waiting on. Their hearts were bursting with joy. You remember how your heart still currently is bursting for joy for that other city? Though we are having troubles and issues down here, Jesus says, hey, I'm not going to make it easy. It's not going to be easy. But we've got to get through it. And we will get through it. Trusting his promises. That's what we've been doing so far. And it's doing pretty good. And as they said these words to Joshua. In chapter 2 and verse 24. It says. And they said unto Joshua. Truly the Lord hath delivered unto our hands. All the land. For even all the inhabitants of the country. Do faint because of us. <laughs> what a, isn't that something there's a promised land waiting for us this world is all we know but there is an eternity waiting for us that's what's waiting for us but you got to remain faithful this is just the background so far it's going to get on here a few minutes it's going to get on because there's a lot here but I can only say so much and the pastor said just let it rip I said okay and did I mention I mean that I love him and how I worship and adore him when I can see there's no way he makes a way and did I mention that he's been faithful to every promise he's ever made me and I love him and that's all I want to say. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. There was waiting at the news of Joshua had been waiting for. This is what he had been waiting for. He knew what was on the other side when he went, him and 12 others went, when he had to deal with Moses. He was second in command. Only Caleb and Joshua were the only two faithful ones. Joshua and Caleb wanted to go over, but the other ten didn't want it. They didn't want the other side. They didn't want that joy. It's no different from today. No different from today. We got our joy. Our joy's on the other side. It's Jesus Christ. That's our joy. Everybody here it's given an opportunity to repent. Everybody. Those who are not saved in the sanctuary, today's the day. You have an opportunity today to get right with Jesus Christ. To go on over to the other side. Immediately he dispatched runners throughout all the camp of Israel, telling the twelve tribes, Get ready! Get ready! We're going over. People are getting pumped. 
It's about, to, like I said, it's about ready to get on in there. Get ready in the morning announcing. Break camp. Pitch those tents at the banks of the River Jordan. This was an entry point to the promised land. Emotions are high. Excited. Looking across the river from a distance at the flat land. It's looking good over there. It's looking good just like for us. But we know what's waiting for the, us on the other side. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. <laughs> Woo! Emotions are high. They're excited looking across the river. And sure enough, Brother Brian, <laughs> confusion always sets in. Mm, confusion. It was harvest time. Chapter 15 talks about the harvest time. The banks of the river are overflowing. They, next, they spent the next three days thinking, good night in the morning, how in the world are we going to cross this? Now, Jesus, you said you get us over. Hold on. Hold on. It's going to get on. But what Jesus has, to, what the Lord has to do is, well, he has to get you out of you. Then we'll see the salvation. That's what it's about. When Moses crossed the Red Sea, stand and see the salvation. It's not about your little egos. It's about Jesus Christ and what Jesus Christ can do for you. That's what it's about. Because he is my Lord and Savior. Because I know what gutter hole he got me out of. <clears throat> Glory to God. I'm so thankful that I can depend on this King James Bible. That's whom I'm depending on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Whew, man, I feel like preaching now. <clears throat> the banks were overflowing. It was uncrossable. It was harvest season. They spent the next three days. And all their confidence was shot. Crossing the Jordan is gone. They have children. They have infants. This is just the background setting. All the infants and everything. They had to take that under. I mean, I'm sorry. They had to take it across the Jordan. How are we going to do it? Hold on. Hold on. The great question that loomed over the camp of Israel. It affects our lives today. How's your Jordan? Do you have one? I tell you what. When I was going through, I don't know when I was when I was going through my thing with my wife at the time. God will put songs on your heart. You were, you're thinking, where do these songs come from? And it's like, uh, when I hear Miss Veronica sing, then I mention his name. And, or David saying the prayer. No, it's not this. I can't think of that one song, but they, he put songs on my heart. I'm thinking, where does this come from? Only him. Because he doesn't want you to go through that either. But you're going to have to. That's what's going to make you stronger. Today, I faced a mountain, and once again it seemed so tall. I tried to climb, but it seemed I'd surely fall. So once again, I called on Jesus. Just as always, I felt his presence. Man, that's what you do. You call on him. Whew. Glory. Luke 18, 27, it says, we're walking by sight. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Walk by faith and not by sight. The things that which are impossible with men are possible with God. The generation that Joshua has right now, he is in command. 
when Moses passed away, Joshua had a lot because Moses had Joshua. Joshua doesn't have nobody to go back on. But Jesus. And that's what we have. When you're standing all alone, let me tell you something. Being a Christian can be lonely at times. It can be lonely at times. A lot of times when you're driving your vehicle or in your room getting ready to go to sleep, who do you think's waiting for you? The devil's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. Come on. You ever have them? I remember Brother Mike Goodson. He had a he I, he preached a sermon one time that where the devil got in here and he stopped his vehicle. I believe it was him. He said, "Get out!" <laughs> That's awesome, man. Get out. When you get fired up for the Lord Jesus Christ, I have a tendency to get fired up because I know what He's done for me. I know where I'm going when I leave this world, and I hope to the good Lord above you as well are in the same boat I am. Because I want to see you all in heaven. I want to see my dear loved ones in heaven. Because that's what's waiting for me on the other side. Jesus Christ is who I'm going to see, and I hope to the good Lord above that you're going to be in the same boat I am. Because Jesus Christ is my everything. He is my rock. He is my life. He is my joy. He is my everything. Woo! And I'm so thankful that Jesus Christ is my everything. Glory to God. Glory to his name. Amen. This was the new generation. Like I said a few moments ago, the old generation did not want nothing to do with crossing over. They didn't want nothing to do with that. But the new generation is a little bit different. The old generation had to die out. Hebrews 11, chapter, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, Without faith, it's impossible to clean him. To please, to please him. Just a side note, no doubt it was difficult then as it is now to follow God's plan because we want to use our own plan. Our plan is a little bit better than God's, yeah. Let's follow our plan. No, I've been down that road. I've been down, it don't work. Well, I didn't think of that. Good night. Now I know why the pastor does that. He gets up here. It, um, in chapter 3, in verse 1, I see a better life here. And Joshua rose up early in the morning, and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan. He and all the children of Israel and lodged there before they passed over. He's saying, don't get comfortable here. You're not supposed to get comfortable here. That's what Joshua was telling the people throughout the 12 tribes. Don't get comfortable here. We're getting ready to cross over. Because I... And the land of the promise, it had to be crossed over if you're going to enter in. This is a type of a believer's spiritual death. In Colossians chapter 3 and verse 3, for you are dead spiritually and your life is hid with Christ. The thing about it is we've got to be strong. We've got to be strong. Follow his promises. And there will be. If, but you know something? There's going to be issues in your life. I have issues in my life. Everybody has issues in your life. That's part of life. You're always going to have this stuff. But we have got to get our nose into the scriptures. We've got to pray to the good Lord above. I mean, I, I just... I'm nothing super spiritual, but I just enjoy praying to the Lord because when I get out of bed, that's what I, I start praising the Lord. I'll say, good morning. <laughs> and I said, and I just start um, praying to him because that's what we're supposed to do. That's just me. That's, what, that's my thing. 
and I enjoy it, and I read Scripture. That's how I want to be in tune with the Lord. I want to start my day with the Lord. That's just me. In verse 2 and 3, Hold on. Dun, dun, dun. I said this before. It's about ready to get on. Finding God's presence and worship. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 13, God is in the midst of the candlesticks. It's the church. When you have done all you can do, follow him, his promises. <clears throat> and the thing, how we get these promises, we get it through the King James Bible. That's how we get our promises. And when we were going to go follow, when we listen to the King James Version Bible, we're going to go follow the Ark of the Covenant, which is the Lord, our God. This is what the Christian is supposed to do. The Lord wants to take you to the promised land so we can do our part by faith. We constantly, constantly have to, you have to deal in this world. That's part of our life because we have, if we go by his promises, go by what he says, go by the, the, during this time frame, it was the covenant. It was a two by three box. I believe that's what I've heard. I, I, I've seen that somewhere. It was a two by three box that they had to follow. And that was, that was it. Hold on. <clears throat> The Lord wants to take his children to the promised land. The th You're going to live forever, either up there or down below or in hell, either in heaven or hell. God did not make these bodies. You're not going to die spiritually. You're going to be living forever, but he wants you to go to heaven. He wants you... To get right with his son, it's for, through simple repentance. That's it. That's all that you have to do. Believe honestly with your heart. Believe with your heart. And confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord this evening. That's all you got to do. That's it. It's so simple. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 33, God just wants you to be a faithful servant. His promises are on the ark. His words, they won't let you down. God is, is bringing them, he wants to bring them to a new relationship. A new relationship. In Deuteronomy 31, 6 and 7, that's okay, I'll go back there. In Deuteronomy chapter uh, 31 and verse 6, 7, and 8. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he, he it is that doth go with thee, for he will not fail thee, nor he will forsake thee. And Moses, <laughs> he's, he's already got your back. He's already has your back. And Moses called unto Joshua. Now he's going to say this in front of everybody. And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto them, In the sight of all Israel, be strong. He says it again. Be strong and of good courage. For thou must go with these people unto a land which the Lord has sworn unto their fathers to give them. And thou shalt cause them to inherit it. There's another promise. And the Lord, he is that doth go with before thee. And he doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee. He already, that's a guarantee right there. Neither will he forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. That's our promise right there. We'll never be forsaken if, as long as you stay content with Jesus Christ and do what the book says, or in other words, our instruction manual, everything is going to be okay. But, you know, Lord and behold, there will be issues in our life. We see, in, in verse 4, we see distance. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits, that's about a half a mile, I believe, by measure. Come not near it unto it, that you may know the, the way by which you must go. For you have not passed this way hereunto. Follow. 
following God. We're not leading God. The Christian must keep this distance. This is God's plan. God wants you to be successful in Christ by following his path. The ark will lead you because we can't get, think about it is sometimes we like to get ahead of God. God, you're going to come on, let's go. It's not going to work that way. We've got to follow him. That's how this is going to work out because he saved us thinking, uh, well, God, I can handle it now. No, it ain't going to work that way. Uh, we're going to follow God, and uh, that's what my plan is. I'm going to follow God to my, to my best ability, and when he comes back to get me through either through the grave or through the sky, he's going to come down, he's going to swoop us up, and he's going to take us out of here. And uh, I'm all for that. The ark will lead the way. We must keep our eyes focused on the Lord. So many distractions in this old world. You know there is. I'm not telling you nothing that you don't already know because all you got to do just as soon as you leave, I've heard my pastor say this, and I've heard a lot of pastors say this, just as soon as you leave this parking lot, as soon as you get in the parking lot, you'll probably a lot of times you'll done forget about the message because you're being distracted. And it happens. It happens. I do my best. I mean, I, this is just me. Once again, this is just me. I try to write it down. I do my best, and sometimes I do forget it. Because I try to think of it the next following day, and I do forget. That's why i got to go back in my Bible. And that's what they talked about. That's just my thing. But there's so many distractions in this world. We need to follow those promises. Never been. i tell you what, we've never been in a spot like this before. The longer, i tell you what, you ought to thank the good Lord above. That. If you've been a Christian for any length of time, praise the Lord for that. Because God wants you to, to succeed. He wants you to be successful in, in Christ. I mean, praise the Lord that you've been a Christian for five and six and one, two or three years or what, however long it's been. Praise the Lord for that. Because the devil at any time could come and get you. At any time, but the, no, he cannot do that. Because you know why? Because we've got his promises right here. Just follow the promises like Moses did. Joshua's not doing anything different from what Moses did. And that's what we're doing. It's about to get on here in a few minutes. That's what we're supposed to do, follow the promises. You know, in verse 7 and 8, we, talk, we, see, uh, we see encouragement. Take that step of faith. God's going to encourage you. Come on, you can do it. Come on, you can do it. He's encouraging Joshua. If you're not a Christian this evening, come on, you can do it. Come on. Don't let the, the devil hinder you. Come on. Come on up here anytime you want to. Come on. Don't be intimidated. We're just a big family. We're, we're here to help you. We want to see you get saved. We want to see you get saved. We want to see you get right with the Lord Jesus Christ. Joshua is doing so. Joshua's got his hands full. He's got his hands full. You can do the same as Joshua. Maybe not on that magnitude. Just follow the promises. That's what we're doing. We're following the promises. Follow his promises. Through God's encouragement, based on faith and understanding. In 9 through 13, we see God is among us. By faith, following the Lord... By doing what he says, drive out those enemies, and it shall come to pass, verse 13, it shall come to pass, as soon as the soles of the feet of thy priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in those waters of Jordan, and the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a heap. God is going to drive out those enemies. 
He's going to get you on the other side. He's going to get you on the other side. His promises will get you through deep waters. The promises will get you through rough times because the promises are the Lord. He's done promises. He's going to get us through this. But you're going to have to go through it. Just take, you, you've got Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They had to go through it. Now, there's Jesus waiting for us. Come on, boys, let's go. He's waiting for us. When the Apostle Paul, when he had to do all what he had to do at Saul, when King David had to go through all of that, hiding in them caves away from Saul, who was trying to kill him. He had to go through it. The Apostle Paul, he had to go through it. Moses had to go through it. Maybe when we go through it, it may not be to that extreme. But God's going to comfort you. God's going to comfort you. And did I mention that I love him? Praise the Lord. I know I'm having the time of my life. I'm not much, and I know I'm not, because I know where I came from. But I love him. I love him. Bless the Lord. I tell you what, this is a place we've never passed before. You know, the further you go on, when you get ready to to leave this old world by a physical death and go on home to be with the Lord, it's a place you've never been. But for some reason, I believe, this is just my personal conviction, you're going to be comfortable because God's going to make you comfortable. That's just me. It's a place we've never been, but I'm getting looking forward to it. Our loved ones are already there. My loved ones are, and I'm looking forward to that day. To that day, I'm looking forward to it. In verse 17 of chapter 3, And the priest that bare the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan, and all the Israelites passed over the dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. I see victory by faith and believing the promises of God, following the ark of God, following the promises. The promises went before them. You know that? I think it's in, chap uh, it's in chapter 2, wait a minute, verse Think of the covenant. It went from, okay, in chapter three, verse eleven. Um, God went first. He went first in there. Come on, <laughs> isn't that neat? He went first, and brother Brian, who came out last? It was God said, I got your back. I got your back. I got your front. I got your back. It's all good. You know why? He promised. He promised you. He promised it. He's got, as I just read that in uh, chapter 2, he's got the promises. No, I'm sorry, in, in Deuteronomy. Mm. I smell victory. I smell victory. They're crossing. And when it came out, and God came out last, with the promises, the testimony are in it. It's in the ark. And his words will not, his words won't let you down. In Exodus chapter 25, in verse 10, God told Moses he, to build a box. And that's the Ark of the Covenant.
You know, you wonder how Joshua, Joshua found faith to God. He proved life of obedience to God. A great, that, that's a great record. What was the message? What was, what was Joshua the message? What was Joshua's message of God? Encouragement. Be strong and of good courage. Neither be afraid, neither be dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee. You know something? What do you do when you don't know what to do? In Joshua chapter 5 and verse 14, the captain of the host, the captain of the host, it was the Lord. The Lord had came down. And Joshua asked, who are you for? Them or us? He said, nay, I'm not for neither. I'm just captain of the host. When you don't know what to do and, and, and you're having issues, Joshua just fell down in worship. And God had, and the Lord had not even done anything yet to him. He just fell down in worship. What I'm trying, that's a picture of just when you, when you don't know what to do, just give him praise, glory, and honor. That's what you have to do. Paul believed his promises, the Apostle Paul, in chapter 9 and verse 5. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou prosecutest. I'm so thankful that I give my life to Jesus Christ. I'm so thankful that my God is my everything. I'm so thankful that I have his promises. I have his testimony. I have his covenant. His words won't let you down. His words are my everything. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're a Christian, I know you do as well. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.